Canst thou take the barren soil and with all thy pains and toil make lilies grow? Thou canst not, O helpless man. Have faith in God, he can. Canst thou paint the clouds at eve and all the sunset colors lead into the sky? Thou canst not, O powerless man. Have faith in God, he can. Canst thou steal thy troubled heart and make all cares and doubts depart from out thy soul? Thou canst not, O powerless man, have faith in God. He can. He can. I don't know the time element. I don't know the, uh, the, the circumstances, but he can do it. He can do it. We just have to have faith in him. Even in the midst of, uh, of pain and suffering and crying, that fellow said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. It's tears of faith. All right. Second, I'd like to talk about some tears of humility. There in Luke chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, the Bible says, and, uh, He beheld a woman, uh, and behold a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the, the hair of her head, and kissed his feet and anointed him with the ointments. Tears of humility. Man, you gotta you gotta know that's some uh, humiliating uh, gesture there. She's she's crying on his feet and then taking her hair and washing her feet. That Bible says over there in Second uh, Corinthians chapter eleven, or First Corinthians chapter eleven, that uh, the hair is given for a woman for her glory. She's taking her glory, and I don't know what all about his feet. They wore sandals, and dusty, dirty, muddy roads. I don't know what's on them. She took her highest glory to clean the Savior's feet. Lowest things of the dirt there in the dirt. And she cried while she did it, while she was speaking to you. So, what is that? That's humility. Tears of humility. See, it wasn't her house. She couldn't go into the kitchen and get water or well or wherever it was. She didn't have that resource available. She, so, she takes the, uh, the, the tears of appreciation and humbles herself. And, cries over his feet of tears of thanksgiving and washes his feet with tears. Humble. Humility. She humbled herself. She didn't pray to be humble. She humbled herself. You know that Bible says we're to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift us up in due time in James chapter 4. That's something you can do for yourself. Bob Jones Sr. said, God will never use the supernatural when the natural will do. You can humble yourself. You don't have to be proud and arrogant. You can, you say, well, how can I do that? She did it by serving. Cleaning. Humble herself. Spurgeon said, humility is the proper estimation of oneself. Somebody said humility is not thinking of oneself meanly. It is not thinking of oneself at all. If that woman wasn't concerned about what people were thinking about her, what she was doing. She was shedding some tears of, of humility and watching the Savior speak and serving Him. Humility. I, I don't know. I read through that Bible and it, it's hard to find somebody that the Lord uses in a good way that isn't humble. Those proud people, Lord, that use them in a good way. They get proud of ourselves and our efforts and our knowledge and our, our feats and our accomplishments and what we've done. Well, I don't know if you you got a, if you got any room to do that because whatever you do, you've done it with what the Lord's given you in the first place. You need to be humble. And Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. She humbled herself. Did you ever stop thinking about when you're reading that that the Lord took that, that event that 
took place in his life almost 2,000 years ago. I guess it was 2,000 years ago. And he wrote that in his book, Preserved for All Eternity. With all the things he could have wrote about and all the things he could have put in that book, John said that the that if everything was written about Jesus Christ, that the, all the books in the world wouldn't hold them. I suppose that they wouldn't hold them. And yet he picked that one out. He picked that narrative out. He put that in his eternal book. Why is that? Because he was shedding tears to you. Or humble ourselves. And serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, there's tears of faith. There's tears of humility. And I'd like to thirdly say something about tears of concern. Tears of concern. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, Paul writes, For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. He was crying over some believers. He was crying over some saints. Why? Because he was concerned about them. That's real concern when you cry about somebody cry about somebody's condition or cry for them. There's, there's probably, I don't think there's much room for argument to say that they was uh, the most carnal bunch of saints in the New Testament. I mean, he read the threads in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He said some pretty uh, harsh things to him in 2 Corinthians. But he was concerned about them. He cried over them. He wanted them to... Uh, uh, to prosper spiritually. He got upset. He was worried about it. You ever wonder about that? I mean, all the things that Paul was going through. He told him, man, I've been uh, shipwrecked. I've been in the deep and perils of my countrymen and perils of robbers and whipped and, and uh, chastened. They ought to be worried about him. He's going all through, through all this stuff and he's worried about them. Amen. 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 I know you got stuff that you got problems and you got troubles and trials and tribulations. Paul did too, yet he was crying for somebody else. He wasn't crying for himself. Amen. What is that? That's tears of concern. We need to that call from Copernicus that lets us know that we're not the center of the universe. There's other people in this world that we need to be concerned about. Jesus Christ is the prime example. He was concerned. He, the Bible says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He said he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He cried over Jerusalem. Uh, he cried there at Lazarus. Lazarus. Lazarus, Lazarus. <laughs> well, in John 11, 35, you were talking about Jesus well. But he was concerned about other people. I don't know. Tears of concern. You may not realize this, but there's other people in this world that have problems and have troubles and we need to be concerned about them. I've told this story, but it's a, it's a great one from William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army. Uh, they had a convention that he was too sick and old to go to. He couldn't travel. They asked him to send a telegram with a message that they could read to the, the people that are gathering for this meeting the Salvation Army and opened it up to read what the great General Booth was going to tell to the, the soldiers in the Salvation Army. It was one word, others. Others. That was it. Think about others. Care about others. Be concerned about others. He was on his deathbed and somebody in London and, and somebody brought him in some, I think it was eggs and bacon or something and gave it to him uh, to get him to the dining room day and said all the poor of London starving to death to bring the eggs. <laughs> He's in his deathbed. So invalid he couldn't even get up to go eat and still concerned about other people. Before before that he took a trip over to India when he was still traveling. They I mean, he was a big dog in the day back in the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. He went over to India and the, the dignitaries came out and had the band and roll up the red carpet and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he got off the ship and he sailed over there on and said, uh, they showed him all these dignitaries and he said, where are the poor of India? That's who I came to say, where are the poor of India? Amen. 
Amen. Concern. Concern. Tears of concern. You got any concern for anybody besides yourself or your family or those that are close to you? You got any concern for lost people? You got any concern for folks that are that are hurting spiritually? Other than somebody that can affect you. 